All right, welcome back. This is our second video of unit number one, basic training. And uh, basically this chapter is all about just uh, some of the basics. What is physics? How do we take measurements? What is a measurement? Uh, the SI system, the metric system, um, percent air, uh, something called Fermi problems, and then, uh, and then basically a lab on measurements. So I could, probably could have uh, maybe re, re, uh, retitled this this particular unit is measurement, um, but it's basic training because we're going to use everything that we um, that we learned this particular chapter. We're going to use it the rest of the year, so it's very important. Uh, the other thing that I didn't mention was uh, we're going to learn how to convert units, and that's something that uh, students from year to year say that uh, is very important. All right, so we're going to start with uh, just basically defining physics. Um, I really see physics as defined three different ways. Um, kind of a religious definition, a, a scientific definition, and then my definition. And notice that my definition has a star next to it, and that's going to indicate that uh, the one I want you to know for the test is going to be uh, the, the, my definition. But we'll give you the other real quick, the others. Uh, this is a great one. It's a religious, is a description of God's creation. And uh, if you're actually in my uh, in my classroom at this point in time, you would notice uh, if you turn around in the back, um, right along the back of the wall is is a Bible verse, Psalm 19, 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. And I really do, um, it, I guess it strengthens my faith when I teach physics because I really see the handiwork of God in his creation. And every law that we study, um, I, I feel we're studying really the mind of God. How did he put... The, put everything together that we live in, this world that we live in. How do you, how do you orient it? How do you put it together? And how does it work? Uh, not that we have all the answers. Uh, we don't have all the answers in science, but uh, we're in the process of trying to figure out those answers. And in, the, in that process, I think we, we un, uh, unpe unpeel back or peel back the layers of God's, God's, uh, God's creation. And I think that's kind of a cool thing. So that's, we, that's why we started off with that one, a scientific... Um, uh, definition, uh, sign, uh, I'm sorry, religious definition. A scientific definition is the study of the relationship between mass and energy. Um, mass and energy, uh, specifically energy, is, is uh, one of the uh, real important concepts that uh, I would say it's probably one of the singular, mo singular, singular most important concept that we'll have in all of science. Um, and so there's a relationship between mass and energy that we just that we describe in physics. Now, I'm not un expecting to be able to understand that definition to uh, a very high degree, or really at all right now. Um, we'll unpack that definition as, as we move as we move through the through the year. But uh, I'm just going to give it to you, throw it out there, and uh, and we'll probably uh, recall it and come back to it um, as as the. Um, as a, as the year un unfolds, the last one is the one I want you to know for um for uh, for the test, and you'll have to know this actually word for word. So this is an important one. So it's a description. Um, physics is all about describing nature. Um, why does it work? How does it work? Um, and that's really what we're going to be doing in physics is describing uh, the physical nature of God's creation. So it's a description of physical phenomena. And there's the spelling for it, using the language of, and then we don't use, uh, I mean, we can use English, and it's not that we don't use English, but uh, really the preferred uh, language of the universe, um, every, of everything that God created, it's a universal language, is that of mathematics. And uh, you're going to find out that as we progress through uh, the rest of this year, <coughs> that we're going to use math to describe a lot of what we're going to see in physics, and uh, and quite often it's a lot easier to describe, um, it's a lot easier to describe a situation uh, with an equation than it is uh, uh, conceptually or with words. All right, speaking of with words, um, that's our next one. So we can take measurements in two different ways. Um, we can take we can describe uh, nature uh, in two different ways. We can describe it um, um, qualitatively. And we can also describe nature um, quantitatively. Let's see if I can get that spelled right. Q U A N T. Quanta T I V E L Y. I'll come back and see if I can sharpen that up on the next video. Quantitatively. So we can do it qualitatively or quantitatively. When you hear the word quantitatively, that means 
quantity, like it's something that you can measure. Um, and so if we're going to measure something, um, then we can probably going to have to use some math to do it. So we're going to probably use mathematics for uh, describing uh, nature quantitatively. And if we do it qualitatively, we're going to use uh, language just or um, or concepts. We're going to use concepts to describe them. See if I can zoom in a little bit better here. All right, and then meaning with, with words. So if I describe uh, something qualitatively, I'll say, hey, um, it, the, the, if I drop an object, that object speeds up as it falls. Um, so I'm describing its, its action with words. It speeds up as it falls. And see if I can get this focused a little bit better for you, too. If I want to describe it quantitatively, that means I have to use numbers. Um, and I would say that an object speeds up at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's its acceleration. And we'll understand what that means later on. So we'll use uh, something like numbers or, uh, better yet, equations to describe something quantitatively. All right, when we take a look at um, measurements, there's two, two major systems of units. And uh, the first major system of units, I guess let's back up and let's get systems of units. This is a group of uh, standard units and their combinations. And we have two systems of units, uh, one that you're real familiar with, which is the English system or the British system, and then the metric system is the one that um, you'll become familiar with as the year unfolds. So we're going to go ahead and define the first one and uh, talk some of the disadvantages of that system. Uh, sometimes it's called the British system or the English system or the imperial system. Um, there are not a lot of countries that actually use this, uh, primarily four. Um, us being one of them, so we'll put uh, uh, America as uh, I-M-E-R-I-C-A. America is the predominant one. Liberia uh, uses it. Myanmar uses it. And Burma. Um, I am not concerned that you'll be able to recall those for the test. Uh, there's Burma on the screen, so you can see it. Uh, but I'm just throwing that out there. The one you definitely need to know is that we we use this system. And when we talk about the British system, we're talking about, I'll put it over here, um, feet, inches, um, miles. That's what we're talking about when we talk about the, the British system. It's numbers and it's units that you guys typically use on a day-to-day -day -day basis. Um, there are some disadvantages. Uh, one disadvantage is, is written right here. There's only four countries that use it. So a uh, few... use um, the British system. Um, another disadvantage is that um, the conversions are complex. So complex conversions. And you're going to see that as we, as we go along. All right, on the next one, I guess let me come back. I'll just state a couple of them. Uh, for example, uh, one foot, you guys know this. One foot is 12 inches. Um, three feet is um, one yard. There's 5,280 feet in one mile. So there's. it seems to me that every time you do a conversion, you have to know a special number. And that gets to be kind of crazy. Uh, in the metric system, which is where we're going to next, um, <laughs> Is you basically just have to memorize 10. And once you have 10 memorized, uh, you can get the rest of them, or the rest of the conversions, uh, fairly quickly. All right, there's a, it goes by a fancy name. I've got uh, a big long blank here, but it's uh, actually several of them. Um, and it's uh, system. It's kind of a French, uh, French words. So the international system of units is kind of another way of saying it. So it's systems. I think that's the French form of it. Basically, it's the international system of units is what we're going for. And uh, SI. So SI would be System International of Units. We just call it the SI system or the international system of units. Uh, some nice things about it. 95% of the world uses it. Uh, the headquarters are in France. 
I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word, but uh, that's the town in France that it's located. Uh, it was established in 1895. You do not need to know 1895 or where it was um, established, but you do need to know the advantages. And uh, the advantages are basically be the, the reverse of the disadvantages of the British system. So uh, it's widely used. and uh, easy to convert. So easy conversions. Okay, with that um, we'll wrap up this video and start with the history of the meter in just a bit.